The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. There are too many Democratic politicians that are actively encouraging this. When Maxine Waters tells people, go harass, scream, yell, and come after people, that's wrong. When Cory Booker, who I like, Cory's a friend of mine, when he stands up and says, go get in people's faces and scream and yell and harass them, that's wrong. And and What about the president body slamming? I mean, you know, look, that's no, what I'm saying is, I get that. That's, don't we need to cool it down everywhere? Every, everywhere we do. I, I agree with that. I, I thought it was unfortunate when Hillary Clinton said we can be civil after the Democrats win. But that's wrong. Re, re, look, look. And by the way, when people harass Nancy Pelosi, I, I spoke out on Twitter and said that's wrong too. Don't. And I disagree with Nancy. But, but we can treat each other with, with decency and respect. That's the right way to do it. <laughs> So let's get this straight. It, it was it's it's either a false flag or it's a crisis actor or it's a fake van now. It's um, you know uh, the guy was paid by Soros uh, to kill Sora, and and it's it's the same as yelling at people, threatening their lives with pipe bombs in the mail. It's the same. You know, yelling at Ted Cruz at a restaurant is the same as sending a gunpowdery sort of a live functioning bomb into the mail system so that innocent postal workers have to handle it and uh, people who deliver the mail plus couriers who had to deliver it to CNN and all. It's the same, threatening, let's see, the lives of two past presidents, their families, a former secretary of state, a former attorney general, a former CIA director, a former director of national intelligence, Maxine Waters, a congresswoman from California, and three senators who Ted Cruz just blamed for his own threat. Okay. Okay. Don't you ever tell me there's no difference between the parties. I don't want to hear that ever, ever again. You say that you cannot rule out a false flag operation. Oh what leads God. you to believe that? Well, it's just one zero for 10 on any of these devices going off. We still have not gotten concrete information from law enforcement whether any of these devices actually were rigged, completely ready to go. So uh, you, you can't rule out those two options. We, we really have two primary. One, we have the, the worst right wing bomb maker in history, or we have a false flag if, uh, operation where it's a left wing type of uh, operation to, to create hysteria and to uh, uh, play on the hearts and minds of those who would be independents or undecideds come the midterm. Well, thank you, Chad. That's Chad. He's a former FBI special agent. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> so there's Chad from the FBI appearing on Fox saying, yeah, includes a false flag is what it is. As part of a larger national effort to bridge our divides and bring people together, mm -hmm. the media also has a responsibility to set a civil tone and to stop the endless hostility and constant negative and oftentimes false attacks and stories. Have to do it. Any acts or threats of political violence are an attack on our democracy itself. Those engaged in the political arena must stop treating political opponents as being morally defective. <laughs> okay. All right, he leaves you speechless, though. So. Those engaged in the political arena must stop treating political opponents as being morally defective. Stop treating political <laughs> opponents as being morally defective. Now take a listen to this. Mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton. Um, she went to your wedding, right? Wow. Yeah, she did. She did. She did. <laughs> In a certain way, evil. She is a crooked one. There's no question. Crooked Hillary Clinton. It's being perpetrated by some very evil people. 
Some of them are Democrats, I must say. It's a disgraceful situation brought about by people that are evil. First part there, uh, obviously going after Hillary Clinton, calling her evil. The second part, a reference to people who uh, opposed Brett Kavanaugh's nomination to the Supreme Court. Uh, he's also called reporters, journalists in general, evil. Yeah. That certainly sounds like him treating his opponents as morally defective. This is really screwing up his caravan strategy. <laughs> you know what I mean? The people uh, we have to worry about are not walking through Mexico carrying babies. They're driving around South Florida with Trump stickers and pictures of Hillary Clinton with the crosshairs over her, uh, anti-Semitic things about George Soros on the side of the van, and big giant bumper stickers that say CNN sucks. That's who we have to worry about. On behalf of the people here in South Florida, of which I am one, two words today, I'm sorry. This man's white van, apparently he lived in it. Um, I, this is his van. These are photos taken by people who drive around Florida and, you know, they're going home from work or taking their babies to school or they're going to the mall. See? And they just see this and they start taking photos of it. I, I see this right here. Look at Just freeze that. Can you make that a little bigger? Uh, I want you to notice on the bottom, after it says this is an ISIS hunting permit with a picture of the presidential seal on Donald Trump's face, it says zero tolerance. Kill your enemy and those who, what? And those who rob you, then take them to the Everglades for gators. Killing and disposing of bodies. Hmm. Maybe he's Saudi, I thought. Maybe he's Saudi. Uh, no, he's from New York. He's just like everybody else down here. He has no roots to this place. This place isn't a real place. This is a place where, you know, people move to uh, uh, because they're running from or because they're old and it's the law. They come and get you and they move you down here or to Arizona. You know what I'm talking about. But this is his van, and multiple people have taken photos of the van. And now, of course, the right wing is saying, this is a new van. This isn't anybody's real van. He's a crisis actor, and this was all paid for by George Soros so that we would feel sorry for George Soros, who this van has anti-Semitic uh, uh, things all over it. Now, I just want you to know that... I, I hate to say it. I get my hair done in a, a strip mall, okay? Because that's where I get my hair done. So I get my hair done in a strip mall, and the strip mall has, you know, a very large parking lot. And it's getting very crowded in that parking lot because they keep adding stores, you know? So, like, uh, now we have a Panera Bread, and we have a Five Below. It used to be a dead shopping mall. And now, the, the, you know, about the last, um, I don't know, five years or so, they've been putting stores in there, you know, like we got a TJ and a Home Goods because they combined it. It's a combi store, you know what I mean? Uh, and so, uh, but it, there's hard to find parking there. So I'm always parking in the back of the parking lot. And what, there is a guy who has a black truck, a big ass black truck, jacked up, right? Big giant tires, the whole thing. Uh, and it's covered like this man's van. It's covered in Trump stuff. It's got a CNN suck sign on it. I mean, this happens all over this place. That is what this place is. That is why I'm not surprised. I told you they were looking in Florida. I knew there was going to be a Florida connection. You know, they're, they're, they're really, uh, there's no surprise this morning. There was just no surprise. You know, I woke up uh, around 6.30, I guess, and I heard this, okay? Well, we're told by several law enforcement agencies now that an 11th device has been found, an 11th package. Uh, this one discovered at a mail processing center in Florida, in Royal Palm. Palm Beach, Florida, Jesus. Uh, which is uh, in the area that was fed, that would feed mail into that mail distribution center that they've been looking at in Opelika. This one was addressed to Senator Cory Booker uh, at an address in Camden, New Jersey. Now, obviously, it was it was not delivered. What we don't know at this point is was this just recently mailed and discovered at this uh, at this mail center. Uh, or this process at this uh, post office in Royal Palm Beach 
uh, outgoing, or had it been sent to uh, Senator Booker and was somehow returned back and was discovered uh, on its way back down because of the of the, uh, the phony Debbie Wasserman Schultz address. Okay, so that was like 8.30 this morning. And then there was another report that a, another one, another one was uh, discovered. And then a 13th. You know what's really weird is um, I was on my Twitter this morning and uh, you know what I do? I research the show and when I find things I think that you need to know, then I tweet them out. You know, this is what I do and I do it at night too when I'm preparing the show for the next day. So I was, you know, and I have the TV on behind me. It's, a, you know, it's just the same setup I've always had in my house. You know, and then it's before I come here to the, uh, you know, Commerce Park. But uh, so I work out of the house until, you know, around uh, 1130 or 12 o'clock. And then I come to work. I come to the studio. So I'm doing this, you know, and I'm tweeting out this. St- and then all of a sudden I hear yet another one was found. Another one. And this one was in New York. OK, this was a, and, and there's a bomb team and there take. And my friend who lives on uh, 52nd Street and 8th Avenue, he sends me an email. Bruce, some some of you know, Bruce. So Bruce sends me an email this morning and he goes, oh, my God, I just saw the, uh, you know, container truck taking a bomb and they're they're moving it down the street and blah, blah, blah. And I look at Trump's Twitter feed to see like, and you know what he was tweeting about? He was tweeting about Twitter, his Twitter account. He was accusing Twitter of total bias, total bias against him. There was a wave of attempted assassinations going on in this country. Two more bombs were delivered early this morning, and he's worried about his Twitter account. I mean, I, there are just no words. I can't even express to you. He actually tweeted, Twitter has removed many people from my Twitter account. First of all, If you check the Twitter deck, uh, Donald, uh, your Twitter account is flat. They haven't added or subtracted. But if you do start losing some Twitter people, it's because they're not people, they're bots. You know, I mean, you want to put something in random quotation marks, you put people in quotes because they're bots. But anyway, that's what he was tweeting about. And then I saw another tweet from him from 3 o'clock this morning. Is this man on a meth bender? I mean, what the F, people? 3 o'clock, 3.14 a.m. this morning, he's tweeting about the low ratings of CNN, who just got two bombs, okay? The second bomb, the reason why it was on 52nd and 8th going down the street of my friend Bruce is because it was leaving 8th Avenue because it, had, it, was, it was slated to go to CNN. This was for the director of national intelligence. This was for James Clapper. And it was supposed to go to CNN. Uh, so they intercepted it and they were moving it down 8th Avenue. I told you, this is why, you know, I wanted you to know where everybody was. You know, Fox is on 6th Avenue, so is MSNBC. And then on 8th Avenue, two avenues over, is CNN, okay? CNN's the outlier. It's on Columbus Road. Anyway, I, I, I mean, I'm looking at the, the guy's tweets. You know, America is on a manhunt for a guy who tried to assassinate all these people. You know, former Secretary of State, two presidents, the DNI, the CIA, former director, three senators now. You know, and oh, and by the way, Kamala Harris got one, too. That was the 13th one. I mean, and the president is sleep deprived, wandering around the White House, tweeting about low ratings. I am more comfortable with a drunk Richard Nixon than I am with this meth freak insomniac Donald Trump, because drunks will eventually pass out, as we know from Brett Kavanaugh's testimony. But this guy's on a crazy no sleep bender like a meth head, uh, uh, d- obsessively dip- disassembling TV ratings in the wee hours of the morning. And ignoring the fact that he really owes a phone call to all of these public servants and say, don't worry, I got whatever, you know, it's just, this is just unbelievable. He's tweeting all morning. And then he tweets, Republicans are doing so well in early voting and at the polls. And now this quote, bomb, in, in quotes, bomb stuff happens. And the momentum greatly slows because news not talking politics. Well, thank God he wasn't encouraging more bombing. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. 
our understanding is that a person by the name of Caesar Sayoc Jr., uh, C E S A R, last name is uh, spelled S A Y O C Jr., uh, currently lives in Florida, originally from uh, the New York area, uh, previously known to uh, law enforcement. Uh, uh, he had some run ins with law enforcement in the past, uh, has been arrested in connection uh, with this uh, bomb probe. Uh, he's believed to be 56 years old. We had mentioned that earlier. Uh, and so uh, that reporting from my colleagues Pete, William and Pete Williams and Jonathan Deanst, again repeating, uh, Caesar Sayoc Jr., uh, 56 years old, currently living in Florida, has been arrested in connection with the bombing probe and is the person that is expected to be charged. Yeah, they charged him. Uh, 2 30 this afternoon, there was a press conference. They charged him. He's looking at like 58 years. He's 56 years old. He's a registered Republican. He obviously uh, drives this van. Uh, some people think he lives in this van. People around here have taken photos of his van, and they've said that they've seen this van at a shopping mall called the Waterways uh, repeatedly, and that, uh, you know, early, early in the morning, they go out to walk their dog, and they see this van, and, uh, you know, the guy has the windows rolled down, or the door is the jar, uh, and for the conservatives listening, I mean, it's open. And they um, are afraid, they were afraid to go near it because they suspected that this guy was uh, living. But he says that he, you know, has a dry cleaner. Uh, he says a lot of things. He says, uh, you know, um, but, but he drives a van that is covered with rambling and intense praise for Donald Trump, which reads, you know, like a doctor's, you know, Dr. Bonner's snake oil peppermint soap. Do you know what I mean? It's like for the alt-right. He just, uh, you know, and there are plenty of people down here that do this. I can't even tell you that that is not a shocking thing for me to see on the road living down here. It's just not. Now, I don't know if Trump dictated seal that text that's on his windows. You know, you know how long he had to work on that? I mean, you're talking about letters, you know, lettering that he's got. To, I mean, I did the lettering on our door here for our business. It took me all day. And all I put up there was, you know, uh, the address. But look at all the lettering this guy does. He's missing a few letters, you know, like uh, Trump spells Trump, right? But look at all of that. I mean, this guy, uh, you know, usually you have to go to 4chan for this kind of right wing. I don't know if he, uh, you know, uh, wrote this down as Trump was speaking at a rally or if he did it from YouTube, Donald Trump, or if he did it from Twitter, Donald Trump. I don't know which he did, but uh, that's what that is. He's quoting Donald Trump. The gushing on his window is so extreme that if it was anybody else and not in Florida, you would get a restraining order. Trump would have gotten a restraining order. He's, he's, he's admiring me, you know, too much. But our president will invite him to the White House. Ty in California. Yeah, okay. First of all, being an explosive expert myself, spent many mil years in the military as a combat engineer. One, for that many bombs to be made, even by an amateur, and not one of them go off, that's highly improbable. But two, well, maybe you talk he meant about them. People... Maybe he just meant to threaten people and scare them and not actually oh, blow oh, them up. If, somebody, if somebody's going to send an explosive, they haven't even said what the explosives were made of. They just have pictures of supposed Maybe he just, devices. well, he did send pipe bombs. I mean, they were x-rayed and they... They, they had... But maybe they he don't, they maybe have never maybe, said they have it. maybe he was just a chicken crap and he he didn't want to kill anybody. He just wanted to scare no, people. Maybe he's just a big gonna send, blowhard. If somebody's going to if somebody's going to send something like that, look they at the mean van to, he to drives. Come on, do you really think yeah, that this guy? Yeah, look, let's look at the Wait a minute. Wait have a you minute. Seen wait a minute. Have you seen your his Facebook page? Have you seen his Twitter feed? Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Okay. You said your own words that people supposedly called your show mm -hmm. and have seen this man around for a while, yes. numerous times in Florida. You're in Florida, okay? I live in California by the ocean. Okay. My, if I put a sticker on my truck and I wash my truck continuously as that van seemed to be in pristine condition, I think he lived the stickers would start to... Yeah, and I got well, either his, way, but the his, stickers but that, would have quickly started coming off. But they it's did. It's odd that they're shiny. But and, they no, did, yes. I was sort of saying some of the letters were falling off. I just said that. Some of the letters were falling off. No, and you said Trump, it was says, misspelled. You didn't no, say No, I didn't say misspelled. I'll no, show you, it to you. Can re you rewind your, are, are rewind you, your show. You said it was misspelled. No, I said Trump 
See there, right there. Can you see it? You said misspelled. You see, do you, you see? Misspelled. Look at the Rewind top. Rewind your show. Do you see at the top there where it says President Trump because the U and the M fell off? Some of the letters fell no, off. No, that's not what you said. That's but not I'm what you said. But I'm showing it to you right now. It's not misspelled. The letters fell off. Well, yeah, look at it. Two letters, two letters off of two All stickers. All right, so what is your All theory? So, 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 okay, okay, okay. So what's your theory here? Where are you going with this? My theory is just like the caravan that's come, supposedly coming, the immigrants that are supposedly come. Yeah. The only these immigrants are going to make it to uh, the border in time for election. You know, I am a conservative. Yes, I am a conservative. I'm I didn't actually ask constitutional. you that. I didn't ask anything. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, in order for these immigrants to make it to the border in time, to interfere with the election, they're going to have to be busted. And if they're busted, they're, they're not going to. Be going to ma- that's the whole point. They're moving at what three miles an hour, and seventeen hundred of them have already doing- applied for asylum in Mexico. I mean, nobody thinks they're going to they, make they, it here until December. No, I don't even think it's that many. I don't think it's that many. But my thing is, yeah. this was a plot by the De- Democratic Party. What was? And and troop- Wait, wait. This what whole was? Bomb- Oh, this whole, whole bomb, bomb issue was bomb a bomb issue. It was a so, false flag. Do you know how they? Ca- do you know how they caught him? Do you have any idea? <laughs> because he was a Democrat. He was a plant. Do you know how, how they, they caught, caught him? him? Oh, you don't know. Okay, how they, let's okay. hear how they caught him. Let's hear how they caught him. Well, doofus, idi- idiot boy, put a fingerprint on the Maxine Waters bomb, and they ran him through the system. And apparently, this guy's got a record. Oh, the, the wait, wait, the post. It was never postmarked. No, the bomb itself. They, there was a fingerprint on it, and they ran the fingerprint, and it came up. Him. Well, you mean the fake plastic? No, bomb looking device. It wasn't fake plastic. It was a pipe. <laughs> it, it, no, it wasn't a pipe. It was, it was a covered pipe. in duct tape. It was, it, no, right, they listen, haven't said listen, what. The listen, listen. Go back. To, go is. back to Reddit right now. Go back to Reddit. Go back to 4chan. Go. I don't read Reddit. I don't watch Fox. Then I don't where watch are you CNN. getting this? Watch... Where are you getting this? From? I get it from actual sources. Okay, don't worry about it. What, I get it what, from uh, actual oh, sources. Oh, okay. Well, I name my source. What's yours? What's mine? Yeah. Let's see. What's yours? Uh, Fox News. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about no, it. No, I don't watch me. Fox News. They're liberal owned. Why would I watch Fox News? They're liberal owned, like CNN and MSNBC. They're owned by the Murdochs. What are you talking about? You're nuts. Okay, they're owned by the Mur- Murdochs. Yeah, okay. what is liberal about Rupert Murdoch? What is that? Okay, they're owned by the Murdochs. Sure. He's a shareholder. He's a part shareholder. <laughs> okay. He's not the owner. So listen, I don't have a lot of time. I only do two hours a day, and you're taking it up from uh, other people. You're sucking all the oxygen out of this room. You're wrong. He was caught because hey, he left a it, fingerprint. It was a pipe bomb. Okay? I just want to tell you, and, you're Democrat right now is, in the state nation. And he is a registered Republican, all the usual warning signs, okay? Just saying. You don't like the results, so now, again, this is what I tell you. You know, the conspiracy theorists. We can confirm that 13 IEDs were sent to various individuals across the country. Each device consisted of roughly six inches of PVC pipe, a small clock, a battery, some wiring, and what is known as energetic material, which is essentially potential explosives and material that give off heat and energy through a reaction to heat, shock, or friction. Though we're still analyzing the devices in our laboratory, these are not hoax devices. They're not hoax devices. The, the guy was, I mean, he's a right winger, right? I'm not the caller, the, the bomber. I mean, the caller was a little, you know, crazy. But the, the bomber uh, was a registered Republican. I showed you his van. There are th- what I'm telling you is people down here drive cars that look like that all over this place we got people that still have uh you know uh, uh, uh the i don't even know what you call them what, what do you call when you lift the, the four by four when you lift the truck up and you put those monster tires on monster truck 
No, hydraulics are like uh, when you make the car bounce, and that's just a different uh, feel. You know, that's just a different thing. No, I'm talking about like uh, the big trucks that are lifted off of the ground, and you know, uh, they they got the big giant uh, off-road tires and all that, and they stick a pole on the back and they fly the freaking Confederate flag. They do it all the time down here. You got a guy. Remember Howard? Howard knows this guy. He runs into this guy all the time with his Trump flag, right? He's here all the time. And then in my, you know, where my hair salon is, there's a guy that does a, has a, a black Ford F-150 like that, and he's got uh, CNN sucks, and it's just plastered like this guy's truck, just plastered with all kinds of pro-Trump, all kinds of crosshairs, you know, people across, and, and anti-Semitic crap. And, and I, I look at these people and I wonder, you know, like, how do they stay out of fights? Do you know what I mean? How do they stay out of fights? Because they're just putting it all out there. And, uh, you know, uh, anybody that disagrees with them, you know, uh, it, I just don't know how. I just don't know how they stay out of fights. And, and I don't know why anybody would want to ride around like that. But it happens here all the time is what I'm telling you. The user of the chat room saying it's called a lift kit. A lift kit. Right. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Not the hydraulics uh, that makes the car go up and down. That's that's just fun. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's just fun. This is like, uh, you know, annoying. And uh, it's like uh, people that purposely take off their muffler. <laughs> oh, so you want to hear a story? This has nothing to do with the bombing. I forgot to tell you this, Howard. Yesterday, I was driving home from work, and there was a guy in a Porsche. Okay, like a navy blue Porsche. And he rolled down his window, and he's yelling at me. And I don't know what he's yelling at me. And he's screaming at me. And I rolled down my window, and he goes, I like your pee. But he's saying the word. I said, what? He says, I like your P word, right? He keeps on saying it over and over. This is Florida. So I said, well, I'm glad you're driving your penis around. Do you know, because he had a Porsche. But whatever, I mean, this is Florida. This is just the way it is. This is what it is. It's Florida. Nobody has an attachment to this place. Everybody disrespects this place. You see people, like in front of my office, which is a really well-kept commerce park. I told you I moved into a Haitian neighborhood. I love this place. Everyone here is super kind and uber friendly. I love my landlord. I love all the tenants. I love, I love being here, okay? I really do. But there is a call center that is a couple of doors down from us. And uh, apparently a lot of people from the halfway houses are looking for work and they go to the call center. Well, these people haven't acclimated to normal life quite yet. And they're not from here. They're coming out of the rehab places and their parents have sent them down to Palm Beach to get rehab. And now they're in the halfway house and now they're looking for a job and they go to the call center and they make, the, they're the people that call you up and say your warranty expired. That's who they are. Okay. And they don't respect anything. And every day, I, I'm on the second floor, every day I have to go outside and pick up their trash. And what is their trash? It's like their fast food, and today I had to pick up packs of cigarettes, empty packs of cigarettes, and you know they're 305s, right? Because no one's got any cash, right? So, I mean, every day, because no one is connected to this as a home place, a home base, nobody, you know. And this is what goes on down here. Now, I don't know what the excuse for the guy in California is. He lives by the ocean. Apparently, he's, uh, you know, ex. He's a vet. So, I cut him some slack. Jerry in Baltimore. Hey, Randy. Thanks hey. for taking my call. Sure. You, you know, that guy in California, he is just like the one that they arrested today. <laughs> Refuses to see the truth right before his eyes. And when he said he wouldn't tell you his sources, I believe he's got the same sources as as, as the MAGA bomber, and it's probably some some Reddit uh, 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 channel. But they're stoked by Trump, and it wouldn't be surprising to me if we come to find out this is a, a, the second part of Russia's uh, attack on America, just to cause disruption and chaos for the 2018 election, well, the ultimate you know, what, what, voter what, suppression. What we have here is a president of the United States who inflames people uh, on purpose because he finds it beneficial to him. I got to let you go because you're feeding back on me. Uh, but what we have here is a president who does this to divide this country. You know, presidents uh, can either tear us apart 
or they can bring us together. And this man has decided that it suits his purpose, which is to be a globalist. I mean, he's got a, a hotel in Saudi Arabia. He's, you know, well, it's in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, which is the, uh, you know, first cousin of, of the Saudis. He's got one in Manila where Duterte does extrajudicial killings. He's got one in Azerbaijan, which was conquered by the Russians, invaded by the Russians. I know this because my friend who is Russian, he's, you know, from Ukraine, uh, f was drafted and fought in that war and got burned three quarters of his body, okay? Got blown out of a turret uh, and literally set on fire. Um, and so, you know, Trump doesn't, he's just a globalist looking for cash wherever he can get it because he, he's like, he's like, he's like a bad kid. He just pisses away all the money his father left him and he pisses away money from casino. You know, he just, uh, he goes through money like we go through toilet paper. It's just who he is. And so he trots around the globe and he takes all these uh, autocrats' money. And, of course, now they own him. Call in Connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Why was he targeting Democrats? I don't know. Other than uh, what you might uh, normally expect, he uh, may have been a part, appears to be a partisan, but that would be, uh, be determined by the facts as the case goes forward. And I'm not able to comment on that. Uh, why not? We've seen his Twitter feed. We've seen his Facebook page. We've seen uh, the other Facebook. He had a, he actually there was a page on Facebook. It's been taken down. But there was a page on Facebook called Kill George Soros. It had one follower and the follower was this man this bomber <laughs> he had, he's got twitter look at this this is this is this look at the anti-semitic crap here i mean this is unbelievable this is just an amazing guy uh, why was he targeting democrats i don't know are you kidding me you don't know you're the attorney general of the united states of america and you don't know now here's the crazy thing oh here's another one uh howard you're next do you see this Twitter feed? Howard, you're next. He's talking about Ron Howard there, by the way. No, not he's Howard. not. He's talking about my Howard. I know he is. He's talking. This is the guy that's, you know, that, that you run into all the time. It's that guy. What is this? Goodfellas over here where they actually, uh, oh, apparently down, they took him to Tampa. Apparently down there, they really feed people to lions. Turns out his sister was a secretary at the FBI. <laughs> These friends of his. No, I'm serious. Look at this. Look, this is this is his uh, uh, Twitter feed. Backed by George Soros, Democratic candidate for Florida Governor Andrew Gillum admits he takes money from Soros. First of all, can I just tell you, George Soros is a philanthropist. That's who George Soros is. And he's a guy who literally escaped Nazis in Hungary. That's who George Soros is. I, Alexander Soros is George Soros's son, and he wrote an op-ed today in the New York Times that is really, uh, it's moving, because he's talking about the fact that his dad had a bomb delivered to his mailbox, and how an alert member of their staff recognized it as a threat and called the police. And how the authorities were able to retrieve the package, detonate the device safely, and start an investigation. And by Wednesday, the Secret Service said that it had intercepted similar devices sent to two previous presidents. Do you understand what I'm saying? There were assassination attempts against two of our previous presidents who, and one of them happens to live with a previous secretary of state and their families. So Alexander Soros writes that we are all grateful that no one was injured and we're grateful to those who kept, kept us safe. But the incident was profoundly disturbing as a threat not just to the safety of our family, our neighbors, our colleagues, our friends, but also the future of American democracy. Well, you know what, that's the very big picture, but think about the little picture. The postal workers, I mean, everybody that had to handle this. Uh, it's so amazing because uh, Clapper this morning, uh, he was on um, 
CNN right after the, the, the you know uh, uh, he got a, a, a notice that a bomb was sent with his name on it via CNN to CNN. That's the second time CNN's mailroom received an improvised explosive device, right? And Clapper had a sense of humor about it. Maybe he understood what was really going on behind the scenes, but he had a sense of humor about it. At least in this case, they, they got the correct spelling of my name and I got the right network. <laughs> uh, I guess more seriously, uh, I'm really not surprised and in some sense uh, relieved. Uh, my wife and I are away from home right now, and uh, our neighbors have been retrieving our mail, been very concerned about them. So in, in one sense, uh, it's, it's kind of a relief, but it's not a surprise. And, uh, yes, this is, uh, as I said last night on the... Uh, uh, Chris, well, it's Chris Cuomo. This is definitely uh, uh, domestic uh, terrorism. No question about it in my mind. There is no question. This is domestic terrorism. There was a guy who, uh, you know, uh, had a political beef and decided that he was going to target Trump's hit list. Now, no matter who, no matter who did this, uh, you know, yesterday I told you it doesn't matter who did this. Uh, whoever did this was working off of President Donald Trump's hit list, his greatest hits. So. This is what the Soros family uh, uh, wrote. This is what George Soros' son wrote. He said, my family is no stranger to the hostilities of those who reject our philosophy, our politics, and our very identity. My father grew up in the shadow of the Nazi regime in Hungary. My grandfather secured papers with false names so that they could survive the onslaught against Budapest's Jews. He helped many others do the same. After the war, as the communists took power, my father escaped to London, where he studied at the London School of Economics before embarking on what ultimately became a hugely successful career in finance. He's a hedge fund manager. It's what Soros is. He said, but the lessons of his early life never left him. His biggest philanthrop uh, philanthropic endeavor, the Open Society Foundation, played a leading role in supporting the transition from communism to more democratic societies in parts of the former Soviet Union and then expanded to protect democratic practices in existing democracies. My father acknowledges that his philo philanthropic work, while nonpartisan, is political in a broad sense. It seeks to support those who promote societies where everyone has a voice. There is a long list of people who find that proposition unacceptable. And my father has faced plenty of attacks along the way, many dripping with the poison of anti-Semitism. But something changed in 2016. Before that, the vitriol he faced was largely confined to extremist fringes, white supremacists and nationalists who sought to undermine the very foundation of democracy. But with Donald Trump's presidential campaign, things got worse. White supremacists and anti-Semites like David Duke endorsed his campaign. Mr. Trump's final TV ad famously featured my father, Janet Yellen, chairwoman of the Federal Reserve, and Lloyd Blankenfein, chairman of Goldman Sachs, all of them Jewish, amid dog whistle language about global special interests. A genie was let out of the bottle, which might take generations to put back in, and it wasn't confined to the United States. In Hungary, Prime Minister Viktor Orban launched an anti-Semitic poster campaign, falsely accusing my father of wanting to flood Hungary with migrants. This included plastering my father's face onto the floor of trams in Budapest so people would have to walk on it, all to serve Mr. Orban's political agenda. And now we have attempted bomb attacks. While the responsibility lies with the individual or individuals who sent these lethal devices to my family home and Mr. Obama and Mrs. Clinton's offices, I cannot see it divorced from the new normal of political demonization that plagues us today. I am under no illusion that the hatred directed at us is unique. There are too many people in the United States and around the world who have felt the force of this malign spirit. It's now all too normal that people who speak their minds are routinely subjected to personal hostility, hateful messages on social media, and death threats. It's also all too normal that organizations doing important pro-democracy work face existential threats simply because they accept support from the foundations that my father started. And it's all too normal that political leaders who swear an oath of office to protect all citizens instead 
pursue the politics of division and hate. We are far removed from the days when Senator John McCain rebuffed his own supporters during the 28 election to patriotically defend his opponent, Barack Obama, all because he believed the health of our democracy was more important than political gain. Now, I don't know why people hate George Soros so much. I, I mean, I, you know, uh, all he does is try and spread democratic ideals, principles, free press. It gives everybody a voice in, in, in terribly uh, uh, communist places or formerly communist places or places that are on the verge of communism again or on the verge of autocracy again, like Turkey, like Hungary. Uh, you know, this is all happening all over again. And the president of the United States loves these autocrats. I mean, Duterte runs around on these little black motorcycles and just executes people that he thinks are, uh, you know, on drugs or dealing drugs or uh, likely to do drugs or whatever. You know, just extra ju judicial. Kill. You got Saudi Arabia. The president made excuses for the beheading of an American journalist. Uh, you know, he's an ethnic uh, Saudi. But this was a dissident. This was somebody who chose the United States because of free speech and decided that he was going to write about the restrictive society that he fled. And he got beheaded for doing that. He got his fingers chopped off in an embassy, in a consulate in Turkey because he writes. So let's take his fingers. And our president makes excuses for, for, for the, 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 the prince who not only beats his wife so brutally that she ends up in the hospital repeatedly, repeatedly, but disappears his own mother and killed his own son. He loves Kim Jong-un. He says he's in love with him. He, he's absolutely falling. He wrote me letters. They're beautiful letters. I fell in love with him. It's a love affair. Kim Jong-un kills his own family members too, starves his people, runs a giant gulag. I mean, it's unbelievable. And you think that people who, you know, spout these conspiracy theories about the Soros as being the problem or the caravan is the problem? Really, this guy, you're afraid of, of haggard Honduran housewives? Maybe, what, 3,000 of them carrying their toddlers? You're afraid of them? And the president, oh, I'm going to send the military down to the border. It's the same old thing. This is what he did last time. You send the National Guard down to the border, and all they can do because of posse comitatus, you can't do anything within the borders, right? So all they do is, uh, you know, technical work or clear brush. But he wants to seem strong like an autocrat. He d nothing he has tried has worked. Nothing. He's got the House, he's got the Senate, and he's got the presidency. He also has a Supreme Court. Now, if he wanted to do immigration reform, he could do it. But he doesn't do it, does he? No, because he loves the issue. He loves whipping you up into a frenzy. He loves you on Reddit. He loves you in conspiracy theory. He loves that you listen to, you know, uh, uh, crazy people on the, uh, on the air that sit there and tell you that Hillary Clinton is the pedophile. This man walks into 15 and 14-year-old girls changing at a Miss Teen USA pageant and inspects them and brags about doing it on Howard Stern's show repeatedly but Hillary Clinton somehow is the pedophile here. He endorsed Roy Moore, clearly a pedophile. Roy Moore, get out and vote for Roy Moore. Went down to Alabama and campaigned for this guy. Rob Porter beat his wife. He said, but he says he's innocent. Roy Moore denies it. The Saudis, they strongly denied it. Uh, Putin, he, he was very powerful and forceful. He denied it. You want a conspiracy? You got one. The president is a walking, talking conspiracy, and it's not a theory. Not all conspiracy theories aren't factual. This one is real. This man has his name slapped up on all kinds of places in all kinds of autocratic societies. And he's not, he's not a wrecking ball for you. He's destroying our institutions to protect him and his family. Period. His loyalty is to himself. What does he do? We have, a, we have a crazy person out there who's sending, you know, uh, improvised explosive devices, okay? Uh, it's terrorizing and threatening to assassinate an attorney general of the United States, the secretary of state of the United States, two past presidents of the United States, three senators of the United States, a house member of the United States, and, and for some strange reason, George Soros, okay?
And the president is tweeting about his Twitter followers, his Twitter account. This is what's on his mind. And CNN's ratings. You really think that he takes his oath to protect and defend the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic? Seriously? Give me a freaking break. All he thinks about is himself. Gave himself a nice tax cut. Gave his donors a nice tax cut. Two-thirds of us got absolutely nothing. And lies. He goes, you see. You see it in your paycheck. You see it. And people cheer. I mean, it's just such an amazing, uh, you know, sales job. The man is P.T. Barnum on steroids. And then he declares himself a nationalist. And some crazed Florida resident who's been arrested. I can't. He's also, he was arrested before for uh, trying to... uh, Throw, place, project, or discharge a destructive device, according to police records. They put him on probation for a year. In 2015, he violated that probation. He was charged with grand theft and battery. People think he lived in his uh, freaking van when he was arrested before. uh, There's a note on one of the um, charging documents that said he lives with his mother. Now, this is the stereotype of the Reddit dude, okay? It's a stereotype of the right-wing lunacy sitting in your mother's house or in the back of a van down by the river buying into this president's demagoguery and conspiracy theories. Wake up, people. This is dangerous. You're talking about an assassination attempts on serious people who do serious work every single day. This man, you check Donald Trump's, uh, you know, uh, schedule for the day. There's nothing on it except a rally in North Carolina and then leaving for his golf course in Florida. It's not working. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. He was the sole follower of two accounts, and one of the accounts was called, uh, the first name was Kill George and the last name was Soros. So there is a Facebook account out there that is allowed on Facebook called that exists Kill jo- George Soros. called Kill George Soros. Yeah, and there's another one called Kill All Socialists. So, so there's so, a whole separate question about whether there should this be is Facebook a, 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 This is a, right, a an academic issue. debate for another Okay, matter. so right. real quickly, hey Facebook, just, just make sure you're thinking about this. This person right. who sent these follows two accounts called "Kill George Soros" and "Kill All Socialists." Now, so next time Sheryl Sandberg does an interview and talks yeah. about how it's all about community and yeah. reconnecting, yeah. going to your high school reunion. <laughs> that's not actually a community. That's, that's ben, not. Ben, what does this tell you? Because again, you've been you've been going down this road of the Reddit stuff. You've been looking at. Uh, I don't know if we've confirmed that it's his Twitter account. We've seen at Twitter. This is his his personal uh, <laughs> Facebook page. Uh, what's the stuff he's posting? Would it make sense, given that you and I were pointing to that van and the things that are on his van are they similar uh, it's it's one to one it's all one okay. thing got it uh, I mean it, it, you, I mean you saw it this, this is the page. okay so here's part. the page kill George Soros there's one this man friend. is the only follower do we know who's the who the who owns this page or who set it up that's the problem you can't figure that out right. why why can't we because it's anonymous on Facebook to, like that is this so, protected. This is beautiful, Ben. This is exactly what you've been talking about for months. If you can't figure it out uh, fairly easily, there's oh. a page called Kill Jarge Soros that, <laughs> but, that that they haven't been able to figure but out. You know yeah. what you can do? You can go to the drop down link and say, Hey Facebook, this looks a little strange to me. That's yeah. what you can do. But so, but in so the world the of Facebook, soul, this is acceptable. We don't know who created it. We don't know if it's him or not, but he is the sole follower of these things. His postings on Twitter so far match the stuff that, that has been on his page. It's criticisms of uh of Obama, it's criticism of Obamacare, it's criticism of Democrats, socialists, George Soros, Hillary Clinton. It, Alex, it seems to have a lot of that stuff. criticism and kill are two different things. Yeah, right. although I'd have Ben characterize this better than I would. This isn't normal criticism. The, the stuff on his social media I is mean, fairly aggressive. kill all socialists is not a regular thought process. Right. Right. What are the kind of things he posts? Uh, that's that's the kind of things he's posts. Like, the, the stuff that you saw on that big board a couple of minutes ago where, you know, where they were Donald Trump memes, things like that. We have two reporters right now, Brandy Zdrozny and Dave Peridis, going through this. Yep. And they will get you a, a very good, very clear picture of what was going on there. But those those two... And it's those, permissible yeah. on Facebook. Yep. Isn't that amazing to it you? Really, here's the thing. It really isn't. The service is so big that they can't catch all these things. Oh, please. And that's, 
again, that's a problem in itself. But you figure there would be a flag for something There'd like that. There'd be some kind of algorithm George. that says kill George or kill anybody. Oh, please, they can't catch it. Let me tell you what happens, okay? If I try and put out one of our commercials, okay? You know, there's a Fire Me, the woman scoring commercial. I love that commercial. Or the uh, Tell Me Is It Right uh, series with the Russian flag, you know, the American flag melting into the Russian flag. Or if I try to uh, do the blue wave, not only does Facebook catch it, but they make me check a box saying whether or not it is an issue of national importance or political. And if I check it and they review it and they decide the blue wave is not political, they reject it and say it's not political. If I then go back and check it, it is, you know, or uncheck it and say it's not political, then they go, your ad's been approved. Right, they check everything. The idea that there are Facebook pages that they, you know, that have kill George Soros on it or have kill all socialists or the word kill in it anywhere, that that should be a violation of their own community standards. And don't say free speech because free speech only applies to the government. The government can't punish you for free speech, but a private company that has community standards or rules or whatever, you know, that's why they can say, no shirt, no shoes, no service. Because that's conduct. It's not speech. And they can say to you, we don't serve people that don't wear shoes. They can't, however, say we don't serve blacks or we don't serve gays. Well, for now. It's all up for debate now, isn't it? But the reason why they can't do that is because African Americans and uh, 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 gay people, uh, transgender people right now are a protected class of citizens. And they qualify to be a protected class because they are often the victims of racism, sexism, ostracism, bullying, and threats. But shirtless, shoeless people are not a protected class of people. I hope you understand this. Now, if the same kind of um, moral equivalency is, is being perpetrated upon us today where the right wing is equating yelling with trying to kill. Can you see the difference? If you can, you are sane and I can work with you no matter what your political persuasion is. If you can't see the difference between yelling at somebody, we respect survivors or we believe survivors, or, you know, uh, Senator Jeff Flake, what are you doing, sir? Which is what the, the, the uh, woman who had been raped said to him in the elevator. She said, you are now putting somebody who is a molester of women on the Supreme Court. What are you doing, sir? If you equate yelling with trying to kill, please never do jury duty. Just please never do. They keep talking about incivility versus violence. That's just ridiculous. Tucker Carlson laughed at the bombs sent to George Soros because he's wealthy. Laugh. In the last 10 days, uh, Donald Trump used the name George Soros for the first time in his presidency, and the guy had a pipe bomb in his mailbox last night. And we're talking about whether or not whether or not Sarah Sanders gets her corner pen. Put a pipe bomb in George Soros. Why do you think? Mailbox? Why do you think they did? You think it's just Trump coincidence? Because George Soros because the richest Donald in the Trump, world. <laughs> Donald Trump runs around. No, because George Soros. Don't I mean, laugh. Count, I'm laughing because to draw laughing a connection why? between Trump, Soros. I've criticized Soros a thousand times. I hope he'll live long enough. I but can you're continue not Donald to criticize Trump. Him. I'm not Donald Trump. He has Our elected leaders are not allowed has... to criticize George Soros. Okay. You know what goes on on the Twitter, right? Uh, the president blames George Soros for the caravan, says he organized the caravan. I'm, I, I've told you, I'll tell you again, just one more time before the weekend. The man who organized the caravan, these caravans happen every single year. The man who went on cable television in Honduras, they have a cable TV station that everybody there who has access to a television watch for news. His name is Bartolo Fuentes, Bart Fu Fuentes. Bart Fuentes is part of the Libre Party. 
And about a month ago, he went on their cable news station. It's called The Journey Al Norte. And he told everybody to meet in a certain place and uh, to travel together so that they didn't have to pay coyotes, right? Because coyotes are like $7,000. And he was saying, you know, if everybody got together and traveled in a group and we all met up at this place, then you wouldn't have to pay the coyotes and you would not have to, uh, you know, deal with human traffickers or being raped. And so he got on this uh, cable news channel called HCH, and he painted a picture of the caravan uh, that changed uh, a lot of people's minds and said, you know what, I can't, I can't do it in safety. I need a coyote. I don't have $7,000. So everybody in Honduras, they said when they saw the HCA news report, they said, this is my opportunity. How do I know this? Because it happens every year, and people were interviewed about how they knew to meet up at a certain place. And so, the, uh, you know, there's plenty of people quoted in this article. This is uh, the Daily Beast. And Gustavo Montoya, 57, an immigrant in the caravan. He's a migrant in the caravan. Uh, he was sunburned. His eyes were sparkling. Uh, he was just reaching the border of southern Mexico. And he said, yeah, uh, when I saw the HCA news report, I said, this is my opportunity. After that news program, I started to get hundreds of calls. And then it took on a life of its own, said Fuentes. Quote, in Honduras. The government wants to minimize why people are leaving. They know they're going to leave, and they want to say that they're doing so because of lies, not the conditions that the government created. This is in line with, with what you, the United States is saying, that there were false promises being made to them. No, they're leaving because this, this pro-government news program played into that messaging saying, I was a trafficker and I was a coyote. He said, I didn't offer any financing. People just wanted to get out, so I went on the channel and I told them where to meet up. That's it. Without having to pay a coyote. Here's the situation, just so you know. There were elections in Honduras recently, and the man that won the elections is a... He's, 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 he's a lunatic, a uh, right-wing... Uh, 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 he steals. He steals from the government. He's an oligarch, basically. But, uh, you know, uh, he was his election was rigged. The Organization of American States, the OAS, they called for new elections. They said his elections were so fraught with irregularities and suddenly overnight it swung in his favor and the OAS called for new elections. Instead, Washington chose to recognize this man, Hernandez, as the winner and certified that his government was making progress on human rights despite corruption scandals out the yin and abuses in Honduras, including extrajudicial killings that have taken place on his watch. 30 people were just recently killed following their protests of this rigged election. And he used it and polarized his country. Either you're with us or you're against us kind of thing. And so the man from the Libre Party went on TV, Bart, <clears throat> Bart Fuentes, and he said, I know, I know, the government is killing us. I get it, I get it. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to meet up at this place and we're all going to walk together. So we don't have to wait to save up $7,000, which they'll never get because the police officers steal their pay. And they work for less than minimum wage, of course. But the United States has been supporting right-wing, extrajudicial, death squad-loving, uh, you know, uh, governments all over Central America for a really stinking long time. So let's not pretend that we don't understand what's going on there. Trump is using these people, just like the Honduran government is using these people. These people have been told you're either with our corrupt government or you're against our corrupt government and we will kill you. And Trump is then using them to tell his base these are disgusting people and George Soros paid for them to... I, it makes no sense, but this is what... Now, we give Honduras still to this minute $180 million a year in U.S. assistance. If we 
would put a, an end to this man's presidency. Juan Orlando Hernandez is his name. Maybe they'd have a shot, okay? But we prop him up and we say, oh no, he's making progress. Just like Putin's making progress and, 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 and Kim is making progress. Live on RandyRhodes.com and the free Progressive Voices app for Android and iOS. Visit the App Store or ProgressiveVoices.com now. I did not. I did not see my face on the van. I don't know. I heard he was a uh, person that preferred me over others, but I did not see that. No, not at all. No, I mean, not at all. No, that, uh, that there's no blame. There's no anything. Uh, if you look at what happened to Steve Scalise, that was from a supporter of a different party. Uh, if you look at what happened to uh, numerous of these incidents, they were supporters of others. No. I'm just really proud of law enforcement. I think they did an incredible job. And I will see you in North Carolina. Uh, if they wanted me to, but I think we'll probably pass. Thank you very much. You know what the question was? The question there was, in case you couldn't hear it, because the helicopter was, you know, because he had nothing on his schedule today except for tweeting at 3 o'clock in the morning about CNN's ratings, and then tweeting about this bomb stuff is slowing down his momentum at the polls. He thinks he's running, you know, in every uh, every state now. Uh, and the only other thing on his schedule was a rally tonight, a rally tonight in North Carolina. And he's, this is a guy who lives and breathes on Twitter, right? Lives and breathes, was tweeting in the middle of a assassination attempt on multiple senators, House members, former attorney generals, sec uh, secretaries of state, uh, secretary of state, two presidents, two presidents, and uh, the former CIA and DNI director. The man was tweeting about his Twitter account and the ratings at CNN this morning. And he lives on Twitter, and he says he did not see his face on the van of the perpetrator who was sending pipe bombs to all the aforementioned people. He just lies. How extraordinary is it that there was an assassination attempt against two of the six living presidents in the very same day? It, it, it's truly unprecedented. It's a horrific uh, event that's occurred. We have political terrorism going on right now. The president keeps talking about uh, people from Honduras eventually showing up at the border. But in our country now, there is a bomber that has been sending, you know, so far 10 packages out there, two presidents with assassination attempts. The whole world is watching. <laughs> And we have a largely mute Donald Trump. He just doesn't want to believe this is happening. Um, and so, you know, there, it's never a good idea in a national crisis for a, a president to be flippant. I remember when George W. Bush um, broke, right when Katrina hit on August 29, 2005, continued to give a speech in San Diego and, uh, on foreign affairs and then played air guitar. And he was mm. roundly criticized for that. You have a situation here where Donald Trump did a little bit uh, in, in Wisconsin last night talking about what's happening and then did a typical political rally. He seems to be, be, be refusing to embrace this as a very serious crisis of domestic terrorism. Seriously, here's a guy who, you know, uh, terrorists and, you know, uh, beheading, you know, they're, they're like barbaric men beheading. And now we have an American journalist who was beheaded and his fingers were chopped off and the Saudis admit that it was a premeditated killing and the president just doesn't even bring it up. Gabby Giffords was shot in the freaking face. Nobody brings that up. It's, all, it's just Steve Scalise, which was tragedy. It was a tragedy. It was a, it was, it was a horrible, horrible day. But there is absolutely no serious comparison to the kind of violence that happens on the right with crazy people on the left, okay? There just isn't. 18 of the 34 extremist-related murders in the United States in 2017 were white supremacists. 18 of 34, it's more than half of them were white supremacists. You know, you got, you got uh, uh, Corey Stewart, the Republican candidate for the Senate, uh, at a Unite the Right rally, and the president is going back down there to campaign for him. This is sick. 
in the middle of a terrorist, you know, and, and we don't know if it's over because after this man was arrested this morning, they found another bomb. And this one was addressed for Kamala Harris. So I would assume that they're interrogating him now and asking how many did you make and where is your bomb factory and how many did you really uh, put in the mail or how many are out there and, you know, just tell us. We won't use it against you in a court of law. We all already got 13 counts. You know, uh, there, I, there, it's and the president couldn't give a rat's ass about protecting this uh, this place. He just couldn't care. You just had Gavin McGinnis uh, the the Proud Boys founder, you know, uh, uh, sitting on the TV saying, kill them, kill them. Remember, we played that for you. It was just so disgusting saying, uh, we're the Proud Boys. Well, what's the Proud Boys? We're a gang and we kill people. You know, and now you've got them on videotape fighting, uh, you know, saying fighting solves everything. We're here to kill. And who invites them? The Republican Club in Manhattan on the Upper East Side. They invite him so he can reenact the, 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 the killing of a, a, of a Japanese party leader. And then after, they were videotaped beating up protesters. Nelson Diaz, the chairman of the Republican Party in Miami-Dade, he organized the Proud Boys. I told you there was a protest here. Nancy Pelosi was down here. And and it, it got like a super, super ugly, just screaming, communist, communist. And, and, and the Latin, uh, the Latinas down here and the Latinos down here joining the Proud. Don't you know you're not welcome in their group? Don't you know that? Roger Stone, when, 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 when he went to Oregon this year, he actually hired the Proud Boys to give him, to provide security for him. Now, I will tell you, for anybody who wants to yell at me about Antifa, 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 uh, they're not affiliated with the Democratic Party. They're entirely outside of the mainstream when it comes to our elections or nobody gives them a shout out. Nobody hires them for security. You know, nobody appears at Antifa events. They don't act like, uh, you know, they're not muscle for the Democratic uh, Party. But Mr. McGinnis was, until last year, a contributor to Fox News. Now he's got his own TV show on CRTV. It's a right-wing video online network. Michelle Malkin does it, too. She's welcome on Fox News. Eric Bowling from Fox News is on that stupid thing. Uh, Ann Coulter, Tucker Carlson, these are racist extraordinaires. These are the, this is their mainstream. This is who they are. You can't, now, I will say Antifa stands for anti-fascist, and you gotta kind of hand it to people who are, you know, sort of willing to get the crap knocked out of them to prevent fascism from taking hold in this country. But they, they can, you know, uh, get violent, and that's why the Democratic Party does not embrace them, does not speak at their rallies, does not put them on the TV, they don't have a channel, you don't have anything. And, and, and the right, when they show up, they flaunt their weapons at political events, they they say, you know, uh, uh, even the, Donald Trump, my God, he said, you know, when uh, if Hillary Clinton's elected and she gets to appoint uh, her judges, uh, you know, maybe the Second Amendment people will have something to say about that. And he also said that the Secret Service ought to put down their weapons one day when they're guarding Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Just put down your weapons one day. I mean, this is the president of the United States. And you want to compare yelling at somebody? Uh, Sarah, Sarah Sanders doesn't get her Cornish game hen on time because somebody, uh, you know, asked her, why does she lie? Or a stand-up comedian makes fun of her eyeshadow. White lies. You know, I, I mean, honestly, there is no comparison. There just isn't. You know, you could yell at somebody. Yes, it's annoying and it's inconvenient, but no harm, no foul. But when you start body slamming journalists, I think you've crossed the line. In fact, you pled guilty to it, didn't you, Gianforte? You got an indicted guy on your ballot in San Diego. So Robert De Niro cursed at Donald Trump during the Tony Awards. <gasps> We're in a dark place in this country. We're in a really stinking, rotting... Our, the whole middle of the country is rotting at its core. This is crazy. This is nuts. You want to see what goes on on the streets? You want to see what, what really takes place? Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> driving in two lanes, you stupid bitch. Yes. That's not how we drive in America. Trump's deporting your illegal cousins today, bitch. Really? This bitch. All right. This bitch. Did you go to Walt? 
bitch. Did you go to the boat? Learn English, bitch. Okay. It's my country, bitch. Yeah, it's not mine, right? Get out. Yeah. When? Stop driving in two lanes anyway, Miss Thing, okay? I am not that driving in two lanes. Take all the pictures you like, bitch. But You're ugly. You need a gay friend to help you with makeup and clothes. <laughs> ah! Ugly, bitch. Ugly, tacky, stinky, skanky, bitch. And I'm with my daughter. Oh, my God. Don't look I'm at it. It might crack, bitch. Gay Republicans yelling at a woman with a toddler in the car. What in the... This is a dark place. This is a seriously, seriously dark place. You have unhinged threats, acts of violence, uh, and, and it's... It, it, they're polit- I said this, what, the other week? Political violence is a thing. It's a thing now. It's an actual thing. This happened to me, well, I don't know why the guy was yelling, I, I love your P word yesterday. I don't know why. He was driving, you know, in his uh, Porsche, and I, and I just said, so why are you driving your penis around? I mean, I don't even, you know, why are you saying this to me? I don't even understand it, but people feel very emboldened right now to just shout out the P word. This kind of threatening violence, this kind of, of, of organized violence, this kind of, of, of endorsing violence on mainstream cable channels, uh, uh, well, they're not mainstream anymore, but you know, this, this kind of, of, of behavior from the President of the United States, uh, this kind of behavior from uh, you know, Ron DeSantis speaking at these uh, white supremacist rallies over and over, 2013, 2015, 2016, 2017, taking money from David Horowitz and, 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 and sharing the stage with Milo Yiannopoulos and Steve Bannon, who can't give it away anymore. You know, Steve Bannon was advertising like some dinner where you got to sit with him for $20,000. You know, there were no takers. They lowered the price. Then they lowered it again. Then they lowered it again. Now they're giving it away for free and still nobody shows up. No, they like to play with power, with uh, uh, fire. Because they think it gives them power. This is some sort of fascist thing. I mean, this is not America. America, you know, uh, prides itself on the peaceful transfer of power. I'm just so scared that after this election, if it's close in place, by the way, I have to play you something for Texas. I tweeted this out last night, too. You need to know what's going on out there, okay? It's not just Georgia. Georgia is in court again today fighting the exact match signature rules because uh, 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 Brian Kemp, the Secretary of State who's presiding over his own election while he's on the ballot for governor, same thing's happening in Kansas uh, 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 with, uh, 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 I forget his name now. Um, yes, Chris Kobach. He's also Secretary of State presiding over his own election. Closed, uh, in Kansas, they closed a polling place in a predominantly Latino neighborhood. The one polling place for like 17,000 people moved it outside the city limits and then sent tweets, texts to everybody in that little Latino town, giving them the wrong address of the polling place that is outside the city limits so that they would, would waste their time going outside the city limits to the west when the polling place, the one polling, was moved outside the city limits to the east. That's going on in Kansas. Georgia, uh, they're in court because Brian Kemp is appealing the decision where the court said, uh, you know, you have to notify somebody if you're throwing away their ballot so that they can come down and show you uh, their signature matches or at least, you know, tell them you threw out their ballot so that they have a chance to, to, to appeal it, challenge it. He's appealing the decision. But Texas, I want you to know your machines are so old and, 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 and you, the, the GOP in Texas, the Secretary of State in Texas, they've known about it forever and they won't fix it. So last night on a local Texas TV channel, they had to put a report out to tell Texas voters, because in Texas you have an option of voting straight party ticket, whether it's Democrat or Republican. You can just press the button for straight Democrat, and it's supposed to check all the Democratic candidates. While this machine, when you choose straight Democrat, it's choosing all the Democratic candidates, except it's choosing Ted Cruz for Senate. Here's the report, just so you know. And the, the, the solution for you is don't press the red button. The red button is to cast your ballot. Check your damn ballot. And if it's not, if it's checked for cruising, you didn't mean it to be, 
then get a poll worker to help you because you only get the one vote. All right, talking politics now. Your voice, your vote. A warning tonight. Election bosses statewide are encouraging straight ticket voters to make sure voting machines select the right choices. Yes, in Texas, nearly 70% of us vote straight ticket. And our investigative team looking into an issue which could cause confusion or even worse, lost votes in the closely watched Ted Cruz, Beto O'Rourke Senate race. Ted? Gina and Art, it's not happening every time, but it is happening from time to time across the state, and we discovered it's been an issue for years. It hasn't been fixed. It's not going to be fixed. Oh. It is a warning for all of us to check your selections before casting your vote. Mickey Blake was one of the voters in those long lines in Houston earlier this week. I hit straight Democratic ticket. So she expected all Democrats, especially Beto O'Rourke. But when she looked... It's all Democratic except for Ted Cruz was checked. So before she left the booth, she backed up and did it again and again. I tried it a third time and the same thing happened. It happened to Cordell Jose in Fort Bend County as well. When I got to the end, I just so happened to glance at the screen and I saw Ted Cruz was selected as my senator. Which is not what you wanted. It's not what I wanted. It's popped up across Texas often enough that the Secretary of State put up a statewide advisory Monday to every Texas election advisor. The Secretary of State calls this operator air. We've heard from voters over a number of elections about this. The Fort Bend County election administrator says it's a problem he's seen for years. He even told the Secretary of State about it years ago, and it's still happening. Still happening. That's what happens when you have a Republican legislature, a Republican Secretary of State, a Republican governor. I mean, this is what all these places have in common, you realize. Kansas. Georgia, Texas, a lot of problems out there. Don't give up, don't give up, don't give in, ask for help, whatever you gotta do. Don't take no for an answer in Georgia. Uh, now, well, we don't know what's gonna happen with these exact match challenges because there was a resolution, the court said, you must notify the voter that you're throwing out their ballot so they can appeal it or at least show you their signature is their signature. And now Brian Kemp, the Secretary of State and the gubernatorial candidate running against the first African-American female governor of Georgia would be uh, Stacey Abrams, is challenging it in court. And he has asked for a stay while the court decides, meaning he could still toss your ballot for a signature not being exactly the way he wants it. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Oh, screw it. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I was going to fact check them. You know, I can't. I, it's uh, Friday. Uh, we're almost done here. Last segment. Haven't used up one second of the weekend yet. It's just like, I feel too good. I don't want to hear him. I just don't want to hear him. I really do not want to hear him. Uh, all I could tell you is that the, the media has been fact-checking him like crazy. This man is, is, is literally, I don't know, he's like on a bender or something. Something's so wrong right now. He cannot stop lying. The lying is so, it's rapid fire. And, it's, and he's got people holding up signs now that say, finish the wall. You, you, you do remember that Congress prohibited any money from the government to be... Uh, appropriated for a single solitary screw or or a bag of cement that would go to building a wall. Just remember, because uh, honest to God, man, these these MAGA people, they're lunatics and they believe everything he says. And the crazy thing is you can't believe anything he says. And the stuff he says incites violence this fake news stuff. He did it today, for God's sake. He was he was talking to a bunch of uh, young black Republicans, and he, he went off the rails, and he started telling them, uh, you know, about fake news, and someone yelled out, George Soros, and he laughed, you know, showing that he approves of the hatred that's being lobbed at, for instance, CNN. Now, this is, this is crazy. This is just nuts. If he doesn't want negative coverage, he ought to stop lying. It's just as simple as that because the news is going to fact check him because that is their job to tell you what is real and what is fake. And as long as he keeps as the president of the United States of America 
lying about various things. You know, he, he says he's a nationalist. This man is an internationalist, globe-trotting real estate investor. He's a plutocrat, okay? He has cut in his budget $554 billion from Medicare. Medicaid, $250 billion he cut out of there. You know, he's got per-person limits on the amount of health care that each Medicaid enrollee can use. Displaced blue-collar workers in the Rust Belt, they take him at his word. They keep saying, see all the jobs? See, They don't really see them, but they want to believe so bad. Oh, you see the manufacturing jobs come back. You see the manufacturing jobs come back. Well, the National Dislocated Workers Grants that write checks to people who lose their jobs because of natural disasters or factory closures, he just cut their funds from $219 million in 2017 to 51. 217 to 51. The Labor Department, adult employment and training activities. It was eight to 810 million last year. He cut it in half. 400. This is why I'll balance the budget very quickly, very quickly. He didn't even try. We got a trillion dollar deficit as a new normal now, and none of it went to you. He's cutting everything that people literally depend on to breathe, to live. Nothing he says is happening. Nothing he says is true. He promises, oh, infrastructure is so easy. I'll do that in, my, I'll, I'll do that in the second year because it was so easy. I didn't do it the first year because it was so easy. It was so easy. There is a net decrease in federal spending on infrastructure. $240 billion in proposed cuts to existing infrastructure. $122 billion reduction for the Highway Trust Fund. I mean, this guy is just such a liar. Everything he's, it's the opposite of what he says. You know, that's why I was going to play the fact check. Because you don't want to hear it from me. Fine, fine. But the EPA, $2.5 billion from the annual budget of the EPA. That's a quarter of its spending. Funding for the restoration of Chesapeake Bay, for instance, falls from $72 million to $7 million. The Great Lakes, $300 million to $30 million. And eliminated or nearly eliminated the entire program related to climate change. The Office of Science and Technology, 762 million cut down to 489. And they prosecute environmental crimes. That's what they do. They prosecute oil spills, they prosecute clean air, clean water programs. That's what they do. Stands there and says, oh, I hate big government, I hate big government. He wants to spend $4.4 trillion next year. It's up 10%. And it's less here and more for a massive military buildup. This is why he's pulling out of the INF Treaty. Okay, first of all, Russia finds it very expensive to meet the INF Treaty uh, uh, terms. So as a favorite of Vlad, he's going to pull out of the INF Treaty on Veterans Day in Paris with Vlad and start building nukes? Really? We already spend more on our military than the next eight nations combined. Cut diplomacy, the State Department, by 25%. James Mattis, General Mattis, he, he, you know, he, he was the Marine General leading Scent Command, uh, you know, which, by the way, is headquartered in a country that Donald Trump, on behalf of Jared... Uh, blockaded Qatar that has the home base for Central Command and 10,000 U.S. soldiers. Anyway, General Mattis, who used to lead Central Command, said, if you don't fully fund the State Department, I'm going to need to buy more ammunition. And Trump was like, well, then that's what we'll spend our money on. $2.8 billion to the deportation force. We already have 52,000 available beds. He wants to, he wants to spend $782 million more, million dollars more, $1.6 billion for the construction of his wall. Whatever happened to Mexico paying for it? Whatever happened to that? And who's going to pay for it? And this stupid space farce. 
He's ending funding for the International Space Station so he could privatize the International Space Station. But he, he thinks he's going to build a space farce. And he wants to spend a billion dollars. He wants to take a billion dollars out of, uh, you know, public education. And he wants to put it into, uh, you know, uh, school vouchers. This is no man of the people. You understand that? This is a man who is beholden to himself. Vanessa in California. Hey, Randy, thank you so much for taking my call. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely correct in saying that these are truly scary times. Oh, my God. I literally... I literally just discovered in my own family people that I thought were intelligent, enlightened, you know, well-educated, support this man and his rhetoric and all that craziness that is chewing on. I mean, I, I, I can't <laughs> even get through to them. It's to the point where I just shut down and it just to save my, you know, my, my, my family relationship. I just shut down. It's like there's, I can't even get through to them. Yeah. And I also can't help but wonder at what point is, you know, the greed enough where, where they can say, okay, you know, we've taken advantage of the situation, we've gotten what we wanted, but at what point are they going to say, this is getting really out of control, it's really scary, I mean, like World War II times, where they're going to wake up and say, you know, we've supported this man, and it's gotten to the point of no return, and it's like... That, that's what concerns me. Yeah, it concerns that. me too. I always used to wonder, when is it time to go? When is it time to go? And I said, you know, I'm going to wait till after this election. I cannot imagine if if, if the thing gets, uh, you know, so crazy that, uh, you know, either they steal it or it's close and he contests it or whatever. If they win, if, if, if the Republicans uh, keep the House and the Senate and the presidents and all that, uh, it, it, we're done. It's done. I hate to say it, but that is the that is the moment. It's done. Because the stuff that they stole in the first term is going to look like nothing when they start stealing from Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security. Our trust funds going to their trust fund babies. And people will get violent. They will. Unfortunately, I, I, I can't help but agree with you. I, and, and, and that's what re really scares me. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Randy. You're welcome. And that, that really will do it. I mean, <clears throat> you know, you start thinking about <clears throat> your mom on Social Security or you start thinking about people on disability who can't. Fit, you start thinking about, uh, you know, people who uh, get EBT cards, start, literally starving. Uh, you think people are going to just lay down? They're not just going to lay down. It's going to be. It'll be a civil war. It, it'll be one upon the other. And, you know, you've got this right wing that is uh, armed to the teeth. I don't know why they're, you know, they're, they're afraid of, uh, you know, uh, violence on our side. They have all the guns. We'll be protesting, you know, with pink hats on and they'll be shooting us. I mean, this is really it. If they if, if we can't uh, do something to check this man. If we can't take the House at least, where we can run investigations and get his tax returns and find out what a fraud he truly is and expose him before he steals the Social Security trust fund and gives it to his trust fund babies, before he steals, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the Medicare trust fund. These are our trust funds. We pay and It's your money. It's my money. If you've been working, you know, uh, all your life and you're, what, 50 years old, 40 years old, I think is uh, the actual number. If you've been working your whole life and, you know, making an, uh, an average wage and you're 40 years old, I think you've already paid in $55,000. That's your nest egg. And if they steal that, believe me, people are not going to take it, uh, you know, all that well. Robert in Phoenix. Hey, Randy. Hey. It's hard to believe this is the same country we served, huh? You know, it just blows my mind. You know, when I when I joined, I joined because there was a GI Bill, and then we changed presidents, and when I came out, there was no GI Bill. And I thought I got ripped off. But can you imagine if they really do steal uh, away from, uh, you know, uh, 55 million people Medicare or uh, Social Security? I just can't even imagine what I'm it. one of them. Yeah, I can't imagine. I'm, yeah. I, I, I came up with a saying for uh, the, the Democrats for this election, uh, if you'd like to hear it. All right. It, it goes out. Uh, it's your choice, democracy or hypocrisy. One is one is always inclusive. The other can be exclusive. With one of these choices, the road goes in both directions. The other is a one way street. You decide. Very poetic. Mine is voter be crushed. <laughs> yeah. Hypocrisy or democracy. That's what we're voting for. Now, we're voting to not be crushed. Truly. Oh, I'm 
It, 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 it's a scary time. You got to remember country, that you have a president who thinks that people who don't have the kind of wealth uh, that he has, or people that aren't willing to steal, or lie, or cheat, or commit fraud, or inherit, you know, great sums of money, are losers. And he thinks that about all the people who aren't, uh, you know, uh, l- willing to lie, cheat, steal, uh, or uh, inherit big, uh, big dollar amounts. He thinks that ordinary Americans, he can't even imagine what, you know, how we do it. You know, for him, it's all, you're such losers. You really are. That you accept that love and family is everything. You have no idea gold toilets are everything. I mean, he really thinks of us all as losers. Yeah, you know, I, I came up with a thought the other day why there, why there's so much disconnect in our country between people and stuff. And I, I think a lot of it has to do with with vehicles. People drive by life every day. They're not involved with it. They just drive by and form their own opinion on it. You no, know, and, and I, they don't I, they really I, know what's going on. It, it truly is the television. I have to say, it truly is the idiot box. It truly is cable television. And I don't mean uh, CNN and, and MSNBC because, you know, MSNBC is, is sort of opinionated more than than CNN is opinionated. Uh, but honest to God, man, they are telling you the truth. I don't find that, uh, you know, if I fact check something, it, it checks out. But Fox just makes it up out of whole cloth. They just, they, they, I mean, they got James Woods and Giuliani saying things like George Soros is the Antichrist. Uh, you got James Woods on Saturday night tree, uh, tweeting that uh, 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 a guy who spreads democracy with his wealth That's what he chooses to make his life about, saving other people from fascism and Nazism and closed societies, that he's a Nazi collaborator. This is a sick, twisted media environment we live in as far as uh, Twitter and Facebook and Fox News and talk radio. This is this is that's the swamp. That's the fever swamp of conspiracy crap. And they feed it to people all the time so that they don't have to. Figure out that your president thinks you're a loser and he's playing you. They give you something else to look at. You have a good weekend, Randy, okay? Thank you. You do the same. Rich in Denver, have the last word. Uh, Randy, I, so much. I love you, Randy. You're, you're all over the place and you blow it out every week. You know, <laughs> just have a wonderful week. I, I'll, all I'll say is what scares me to that last guy saw it is I, I knew it was on talking about if they think they would, that they take the house and stuff, then 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 we'll see. What he said was, "Well, we'll see if uh, Kavanaugh was Kavanaugh worth it." Kavanaugh in the court, right? I heard it you too. Know, so I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm just. I I I'm, I'm I, 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 I know. <laughs> Thanks for it. It does take your breath away. It does. It really does. That's what you know. What he's talking about. I, if you want, I'll tweet it out later. But it was Newt Gingrich sitting there and uh, being asked by Karen Tumulty, who I absolutely adore and I've known her for a long time. If they, if, if we take the House and we get Trump's tax returns, he said, well, then we'll, it'll go all the way to the Supreme Court and we'll find out if Kavanaugh was worth it. Meaning he knows Kavanaugh is a dirty, dirty bird. All right. Have a good weekend. We'll see you Monday. Bye, Stinking Podcast.